All right, this is an alternate take of my review for Dynamite. I gave an initial impression video that I may do some clips of, but couldn't remember what the second match was. Now that I didn't remember, I was like, oh man, now I just sound like an idiot, so. Uh, currently watching the main event, uh, inspired to start this by saying that uh, I happened to notice as Eddie pulled the apron up that it says dark underneath the Dynamite apron. Um, it had previously been stated in some comments on Sammy Vlog as well as uh, yesterday's AEW Dark that uh, Dark was not going to be going on the road with them, and I knew that that was a bunch of nonsense because that's how they do it. So uh, obviously we're going to have Dark next week, and it's going to be from Miami. Um, maybe they'll supplement with some matches from Daly's Place. I don't know. We'll see. Um... This one was much better than last week's. The advertising schedule was a lot more uh, reasonable. And in retrospect, I do recognize that they were trying to go commercial free for the opener and the closer. However, it was still. Oh. Smoke too soon. Um, opener match, the strap match, super good. Had a good time. Uh, Cody and QT have some really good chemistry together. Cody knocked it out of the park. QT bleeding all over the place. Uh, couldn't tell if he uh, bladed himself or not. He was down on the floor for a second before he got up, and I think he might have. Um, some pretty, sh pretty stiff shots with that strap, too. But uh, anyways, it was good. The triple, uh, triple crossroads was pretty cool. Uh, at one point, the lights went out during that match, and Cody kind of looked up thinking somebody was going to come out. When they came back on, and then, of course, the announced team blamed it on the weather. Um, in retrospect, it was uh, foreshadowing, as it were, to um, the later later event that I'll get to. Second match was the uh, trios tag with uh, Inner Circle versus the Pinnacle. Uh, decent match. Nothing super outstanding. Unfortunately, the uh, TNT app and my bandwidth, there's a thunderstorm. It was skipping around. Um, I actually missed about the last minute of the match due to that. It had fallen behind, and when it caught itself up was after the fact. But the last thing that I saw was uh, Hager putting Wardlow in an ankle lock, so I'm assuming that uh, the inner circle won that. But I don't know. We'll find out when they upload a clip. Um, promos were good. The uh, Ethan and Darby interview was good. Um, that it, they're they're trying to trying to build the animosity and the tension, but at the same time, I can kind of tell in the interaction that those two are actually good friends. Um, but the best matches in wrestling, the best chemistry between opponents, comes from people who are friends. It's just the rule. Um, Britt Baker's little pipe bomb of a, a promo also kind of skipped around on the bandwidth, uh, but the only thing I really missed on that was, I'm guessing, the punchline to her joke about Dallas being called the Big D was that it was going to be called the Big DMD. But uh, she laid it out there with her statement about uh, Rebel getting injured and Andrade being there for blood money, and the <laughs> she basically quoted, quoted Cornette and called it the match that nobody wanted to see. Um... And uh, then uh, added that uh, if they're going to be doing that sort of thing with this, this uh, blood money to appease Andrade or whatever, they might as well broadcast Dynamite from Saudi Arabia next week. The whole crowd's like, ooh. And uh, I, I don't know if she passed that one by Tony before saying it or if she just brought it out there. Um, MJF and Jericho promo and signing was pretty good. Uh, Audience member tried to rush the ring, and Jericho kind of popped the dude or whatever, but MJF was the one that that uh, dealt with him because he's the heel. Of course, um, knowing the nature of kayfabe, I'm guessing that uh, MJF's actually a very gentle soul in real life, and for him to want to swing on somebody or swat somebody out of the ring probably was not his favorite thing to do. <clears throat> um... 
Tony Schiavone interview with uh, Arn Anderson started out normal. Arn getting ready to charm the crowd because he's got a, a great way of speaking and uh, it's nice to have a legend talk. And of course, the lights go out. And Excalibur mumbles about the bad weather outside because there's a hurricane nearby or whatever. And uh, then the lights come back on, and who is in the ring? But Malachi Black, formerly known as Tommy N, formerly known as Alistair Black, and he administers Black Mass to both Arn Anderson and then subsequently Cody Rhodes. And that means that there is a Malachi and Cody match on the horizon. Um, I think that's going to be exciting. I think that's going to be good. I'm looking forward to what they're going to do uh, with Malachi Black in AEW. He's a storyteller. They've needed stories, like real stories. And uh, I, I think that'll be good. Um, Andrade's match with Matt Sado was really good. Um, Andrade did that moonsault where Matt rolled out of the way and Andrade just landed on his feet and then did another moonsault and hit Matt. Kudos to both of them for the placement and timing of it being perfect. That was really good. It was a good match. It was a great debut for El Idolo. Um, the uh, mixed tag match with... Uh, Orange Cassidy and Chris Stapp versus the Bunny and the Blade was pretty good. Could have been more, could have been better, but uh, I did like the story that they told. Um, the good guys got the win in the end, thankfully. Uh, as, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember which announcer said it was a, a high IQ move by Chris Statlander to tag Orange Cassidy after he'd been knocked out meaning that the Blade was unable to pin him or get a count out. Blade was trying to do a cocky pin, put his foot on his chest and flex his biceps. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention the... Uh, Another chance for uh, Evil Uno to go at it on the mic with Kenny Omega. Those two have good chemistry. <laughs> What's the capital of Thailand? Ah, great. Kenny's busting out the cheesiest shit. It's amazing. I love it. I love his character. Um, he kind of let on what his, what his uh, underlying influence is last week with a couple of little woos and whatever. I'm waiting for him to, to throw off his jacket and point and say, this is you, and then do an elbow drop on the jacket. Because uh, he is channeling Ric Flair, something fierce. Um, which is funny because the you know Ric Flair was in the Horsemen and the the Pinnacle are kind of the new Horsemen, but <laughs> Kenny's the one with the Nature Boy aura, the 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 Ric Flair drip, as it were. Um, so yeah, Dark Order come out, had a good uh, row with uh, the rest of the Elite. Jesus, Brandon, what the hell? Brandon Cutler threw a table. He just keeps spraying like it's going to do anything. It's like, I don't know, man. Grand Theft Auto, if somebody's got a fire extinguisher and they're trying to, you're shooting them and the only weapon they have is a fire extinguisher, so they're trying to... Psh, 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 psh. No referee, come on. No way, no possible way that they're going to change tag titles from the Bucks, the EVPs of the company, on TV. Just no way it's going to happen. And there's Frankie. But uh, anyways, yeah, the Dark Order bit was great because Hangman did come out and he thought he was going to do the buckshot on Kenny, but instead he got up in his face and they had a good old back and forth. Um, oh yeah, let's see, they, did a, they were going to do an interview with the uh, local Miami MMA, ooh, Eddie with the thumbtacks, local MMA superstars and... Uh, the oh shit! Thumbtacks to the face. Uh oh, Eddie's. Oh no! What carnage indeed. So, anyways, uh, MMA dude getting up in the ring lays out a promo to uh, 
to, to school literally everyone in AEW on how you do a heel promo in the ring. No props, no gimmicks, just a man in a microphone telling everyone in the room that they suck. And he gets to this trust your instincts, AEW sucks, whatever, and all of a sudden Lance Archer is there and he gives him the freaking... Oh, what is it? The over-the-top insider edge that he does. Um, holy shit, Penta just took a top rope Hurricane Rana into the thumbtacks. Good thing he's wearing like an inch of body armor. Um, anyways, yeah, so this dude uh, went to cut a, a savage promo on the wrestling business being dead and all this other stuff. Real heel shit, it was great. Real inspired promo. And uh, Lance gives him his finisher, clocks him, it was great. Him and Jake come walking out of the ring and, and moving on to the next bit. This, it's not exactly in order here, but it's as I remember it. Um, it's been a good episode so far. Uh, we're coming up right on nine, so it looks like we're about to run out of TV time. Yeah, they got the three count on Eddie. Yeah, of course. No way the Bucks are going to give that title up on TV. Sorry. Been watching wrestling for too long. So anyways, yeah. Uh, Road Rager, pretty good. Enjoyed it. Um, looking forward to Fighter Fest. Nick rolled into the thumbtacks after the pin. <laughs> oh... And it uh, looked like there's some uh, implosion of the Team Taz going on on a promo spot as well, as I recall. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting next week with uh, Absolute Ricky Starks being medically cleared, hopefully. And uh, the fucking machine, Brian Cage. It's going to be good stuff. Ah. Uh, So yeah, um, definitely an improvement over last week, and I gotta say, um, one of the things that I've noticed consistently, and especially this one proven it, um, AEW is very self-aware as a promotion. The people within it and the company itself are aware of the fact that people watch, aware of the fact that they're smart marks, aware of the fact that Slim Carnet's got something to say. And as JR was saying, most people in the back don't really listen, but you know some of them do. Obviously, Britt pays attention. She. <laughs> If nothing else, Jim Cornette gives Britt Baker ammunition every week for things to use in her heel promos because she's so good at it, and she'll rip into something like he ripped into and just basically say the same thing, and it's what a heel would say because he's kind of a heel too. Um, yeah, I'd say overall this one was a definite improvement over last week. I felt like last week was a lot of filler, but then they kind of acknowledged it with the whole match that nobody wanted to see anyway thing. And uh, obviously they wanted to save some big uh, debut stuff for actual live audience on the road, not the usual Jacksonville crowd. Because you know a lot of them folks that go to that show are the same folks at the show every week. If they're from Jacksonville and they're fans, they're going to keep coming back, which is cool too. Um, the last thing that I want to mention that I said in, uh, in the other cut is uh, Tony Khan would be an absolute moron. As I said in the last one, word for word, a moron. If he does not capitalize on the popularity of Fuego del Sol, that dude is so over. He is the underdog hero of AEW, and he doesn't even <clears throat> work for AEW that I'm aware of. Um, now, we know that there's going to be some dark matches, obviously, coming from this Miami show, whether or not Fuego is there or not. Maybe it's, AEW is really good at keeping secrets. Nobody knew that the Malachi Black was going to come out. Um, so, for all we know, uh, Fuego's in backstage and just nobody knew um this show is full of storyline continuation promo bits uh sean spears versus sammy guevara stuff um now that fuego's got to win he's got to have some some chance to win again at some point but uh you know i know cody did his whole whole uh, hire my friends thing. These guys are so independent. Help them out, help them out. But at the same time, um, Kylan worked through the entire pandemic. She was part of the nightmare taping. She should have a contract. Baron Black was there pretty much through the entire thing, including the nightmare tapings. He should have a contract. 
Fuego Del Sol, round about the same time, and certainly because he's become such a popular figure on the vlog and with the crowds. I mean, Jesus Christ. At the Double or Nothing pay-per-view, they walked him out. The guy gets a standing ovation, a pop pretty much equal to or bigger than anybody that was booked for the show. He wasn't even working the show, and he got that pop. You got to give the guy credit. You got to give the guy a job. So, um... Yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, it's, it's an evolving thing because the future is uncertain, which is also kind of cool. So, um, you know, we'll see what we get next week with uh, Elevation and Dark. We will see what we get with uh, BTE and the Vlog. Um, obviously, waiting to find out what's up with the Dark Order since they were banished from BTE by the Bucks, uh, whether they get their own. We've been waiting for being the Dark Order for some time, and I think it's about time that they get their own web show. So, uh, yeah, this concludes my uh, Dynamite review for the uh, Road Rager in Miami. I thought it was a great show. Um, I don't know what all real technical difficulties there were compared to kayfabe technical difficulties, but whatever, man. It's a good show. Had a good time watching it. Laughed my ass off when that MMA dude got popped by Lance Archer, and then Lance just stands there and stares at the hard cam. And Jake's like, come on, come on, we got to get out. Great stuff, great stuff. <clears throat> also of note, uh, The Hannibal TV has been helping promote um, the, uh, what is that, world-class wrestling promotion. Um, they are, uh, I believe, primarily Midwest-centered. Um, they've got uh, quite a few famous names on their roster uh, Ray Mysterio is an alumnus. Jake the Snake is an alumnus. Um, they, oh no, Jake's currently involved in it, as is uh, Psycho Sid. And if you scroll down through their um, their roster as well, there is one El Fuego del Sol on their roster as well. So uh, you get uh, Will Alday and a few other people that have come in to uh, do the job on um, Dark and Elevation. There's a lot of people from this world-class wrestling promotion um, that it has a lot of history. It's, I think, probably about as old as the NWA is um, in its original entirety. So there's, there's a lot of people from this uh, uh, pretty cool Midwest and Southern promotion that are getting some, some airtime with AEW and some other promotions. Hannibal's giving them uh, a lot of attention as well. Uh, he's cross-promoting with them on pretty much everything at this point, operating their, their website, I believe, at this point. Um, so... Uh, We'll see what the future brings with uh, some of these indie promotions uh, as we get some more matches coming out with that. And, uh, and obviously some of these folks that uh, Cody was like, help hire my friends. These people need work. Like, I mean, hopefully AEW does too. But, uh, you know, as far as hiring them goes. And don't forget, at the very end of the Sammy Vlog, uh, Cody pulled the Friend Olympic scorecard out of the trash can and said, what the hell am I doing? I need this. So... Yeah, they gave us a big old tearful goodbye on Sammy's vlog, and we'll see what next week brings, if it's just the entire crew back again. So that's it for now. Good show. Had a good time. Peace out.